Let's do it. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to meet with Field and Stream and Outdoor Life. We'll talk Great about magazine. It. Thank you very much. I guess the first thing I'd like to ask uh, is, are you a gun owner, a hunter? Two of you? I do have a gun, and I have a concealed carry permit, actually, which is a very hard thing to get in New York. And, of course, the problem is, you know, once you get to the borderline of New Jersey or anyplace else, you can't do it, which is ridiculous, because I'm a very big Second Amendment person. But I do have a, a gun, and my sons are major hunters, and they love it. They love it. And I'm a member of the NRA. Do you hunt with your sons? How did they get into the sports? Well, they got in, just loved it, and their uh, grandfather was uh, a hunter, and he would take them hunting as young boys, and they just loved it. They have a, a tremendous passion for it, and I don't devote very much time to it because I'm so busy with everything, but Eric and Don absolutely love it, and they're expert at it. They're expert shots, and they're expert at it. I'd like to talk about uh, public land. 70% of hunters in the West hunt on public lands right. and managed by the federal government. Right. right now there's a lot of discussion about the federal government transferring those lands to states, divesting of, this, of that land. Is that something you would support as president? I don't like the idea because I want to keep the lands great and you don't know what the state's going to do. With them. Are they going to sell as soon as they get into a little bit of a trouble? And I don't think it's something that should be sold. We have to, we have to be great stewards of this land. This is magnificent land. And, we have to be great stewards of this land, and the hunters do such a great job. I mean, the hunters and the fishermen and all of the different people that use that land. So I've been hearing more and more about that. It's just like the erosion of the Second Amendment. I mean, every day you hear Hillary Clinton wants to essentially wipe out the Second Amendment. Uh, we have to protect the Second Amendment, and we have to protect our lands. If you were elected president, would you reverse executive orders that President Obama put in on guns recently? Yes, I would really. I think it's ridiculous. I think, number one, if you're going to do anything, and I don't think you should do anything because we have enough rules and balances and checks, uh, you have to go through Congress. You can't just write an executive order and sign it. You're supposed to talk to the congressmen who represent a lot of your readers, and you know they have to sort of say, let's do this or let's do that. You don't do an executive order, but I'm for doing nothing. You know, it's a mental health problem, right? And the guns aren't pulling the triggers, okay? It's people that are pulling the triggers. We have a big mental health problem, and they're closing up all of the hospitals, all of the institutions, and that's our problem. And uh, so I would, uh, I would absolutely reverse uh, many of his executive orders. Beyond this, many of his executive orders. Uh, let me ask you this, back to conservation and access for hunters' rights to get on public land. One of the things that we found is so much of this campaign, not your campaign, but this election cycle has talked about cutting budgets and right. reducing the federal government. And what the budget is for managing federal lands right now is at 1%. In 1970, it was 2%. Would you continue to push that number down for wildlife conservation, or would you look to uh, invest more? I don't think there's any reason to, and I will say, and I've heard this from many of my friends who are really avid hunters, and I've heard it from my sons who are avid hunters, that. Now, the lands are not maintained the way they were by any stretch of the imagination. And we're going to get that changed. We're going to reverse that. And the good thing is I'm in a family where I have, I mean, I'm a member of the NRA, but I have two longtime members of the NRA. They've been hunting from the time they were five years old, or probably maybe even less than that. And uh, they really understand it. And I like, I like the fact that, you know, I can sort of use them in terms of, they, they know so much about every single mm -hmm. element of every question that you're asking. And one of the things they've complained about for years is how badly the federal lands are maintained. So we'll get that changed. Yeah. It's really all about access. And I mean, I feel like the side that's the anti-hunting crowd, they're trying to eliminate that access, make it that much more difficult for people to get the next generation in. For me, hunting and fishing kept me out of so much other trouble I would have gotten into throughout my life that it's just so important to be able to maintain that so that next generation gets into it. And it's the typical liberal death by a thousand cuts. We'll make it a little harder here, make it a little harder here. We won't spend the money there. And it's not just about hunting. It's about fishing. It's about hiking. It's about access. It's about being able to get in there and enjoy the outdoors, enjoy those great traditions that are so, you know, so much the foundation of America. Uh, and so we'd be against anything like that. And frankly, it'd be about refunding those, making sure those lands are maintained properly, making sure that they're not going uh, into private hands to be effectively walled off to the general public. Uh, and that's something really important to us. Absolutely. How would you balance energy exploration and extraction on public lands? How would you balance that with the need for recreation and multiple use? Right now, gas prices are low, but they might not stay that way. Well, I'm very much into uh, energy, and I'm very much into going and fracking and drilling and. We never want to be hostage again to OPEC and go back to where we were. 
And right now we're at a very interesting point because right now there's so much energy. And I've always said it, there's so much energy. And new technology has found that. And that's both an advantage and maybe actually it's more of an advantage in terms of your question. Because we don't have to do the kind of drilling that we did. But I am for energy exploration as long as we don't do anything to damage the land. And right now we don't need too much. There's a lot of energy around. Do you have time for one more? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you're elected, will you go hunting with your son as president? I would do that with my both sons. I would do that. Mm -hmm. And I'd feel very good with them. And, uh, you know, I, in New York City, so I have a concealed carry permit. And I, I must tell you, I just wanted to put that up because it's so hard to get. I mean, it's one of the hardest things you can get. And very hard. As far as uh, going hunting with my boys, that would be something that I'd love to do. I've done it before, but I'd love to do it. Where would you take them? Uh, we'll come up with something good. I mean, I, I think we keep it to the upland type birds. You know, that's how I've introduced everyone that I've ever introduced to hunting. You know, taking some of these people that are city people and just take them on a walk up, go shoot some clays, then take them on a walk up. And not one of those people has ever turned to me and said, you know, that was one of the greatest weekends I've ever had in my life. It's just, you just got to get people into it. You need to be a mentor. And that's what we need more of in this industry, mentors to get rid of you know, some of the difficulties, the barriers of entry, which are a little bit intimidating at times. So being able to create that, open up those doors to those people, create some new hunters and bring the next generation into the game. Excellent. You see what I mean? Yeah, I do see what you mean. Thank you very Thank much. You very much.